Okay, today we are installing some big upgrades. We are taking this room to the next level. But if you are new to it, if you haven't seen the setup before, let's take a little recap. The room is dominated by these two 4K TVs. They're not super high end, but they definitely do the job. Above those, we've got the Nanoleaf Aurora lighting kit, the Noble Chair Icon. This is a chair that I really, really like. And you'll notice two white desks, the use of which will become pretty clear in a second. We've also got the Ursa Mini Pro camera, which I've been using for a couple of months, and it's taken me about that long to figure out how to color grade properly on it. But I think we got it down to a T now. All right, so for most people who watch my videos, you'll always see one half of the room, but never the other. So let's start with that cupboard in the corner. It's pretty special. There's the Flap It subscriber counter on top, and as you can probably tell, we stopped using that a while back. But the really humbling part here is that we've reached a number of subscribers that is beyond what the counter can even display. That's all thanks to you guys. Also on top is this flimsy little plastic apparatus, which, yes, it doesn't mean much to most people, but is what helped us create our first ever viral video. All right, the top shelf has got some tablets that I've tested in the past and the e-reader that I use, which is the Nook. But below that is probably my favorite shelf. This is basically retro gaming. This is all the handheld consoles I've used in the past. It's just one giant throwback every time I look at it. We've got the Nvidia Shield, Game Boy Advance, some little Pokemon badges over there, and even the Nokia 3310, which to date is one of the best selling phones in the world of all time. That's kind of incredible. Moving down a shelf, this is also pretty cool. This one is Bluetooth speakers, ones that are small enough to fit into this confined space. And my favorite out of all the ones that are here is actually by the company Archeer. It's not a cheap one, but the sound is great and the wood and fabric finish is pretty rare among speakers. Just below that, we've got a pretty miscellaneous shelf. We've got some smartphone boxes, but of note, a brand new iPhone 10, which I am meaning to give away over on my Twitter page. So hopefully I'll get around to that soon. We've got some power banks and my number one favorite is by a Again, a company you've probably never heard of, iMuto. It's got very solid capacity, but more importantly, an AC adapter. Cool. So there's just one more shelf at the bottom, and that has a lot of the games I've accumulated over the years. Um, I'm not getting many new ones in now, just because I don't have much time to play them, but hopefully it's something I do want to do down the line. All right, that's the cabinet covered, but right next to it, you've probably noticed this funny looking bin which I gotta say, it's become a staple in the room. And whilst it's so good, I couldn't recommend it more, sometimes you forget how to use a normal bin. <laughs> I've got to admit, a lot of the cooler stuff is actually behind us on the other side of the room. So let's take a look at that. This table, uh, you might be wondering, Aaron, why do you have a cutting mat on it? And funnily enough, I'm not doing any cutting. It just makes a great prop for overhead shots. If you arrange the phone carefully, add some plants in, add some decor, this looks really good. We've got a few different candles because again, these are awesome for props for overhead shots. And this funky little USB powered lighter, which is one of my favorite things in the room. On a similar note to that cutting mat, I've got some other textures which are quite cool for a similar purpose. We've just got some new grass ones in, we've got a slate and we've got some wood. What about the cabinet behind, which I think is probably my favorite part of the room. So opening up this door, we've got phones. We've got quite a few smartphones over here. Now, a lot of these are budget phones. A lot of them aren't flagships, but I think in total, we've got around a hundred handsets here. And the reason for this, the reason for just storing phones back to back is as a point of reference. When testing new devices, it always gives you a bit of an insight when you look back to see where they've come from. Okay, let's get started on the upgrades. The first from Logitech is the G560. Comprised of three main parts, we've got one giant subwoofer, which connects to two smaller tweeters. And there's something pretty special about these tweeters. They are filled with LEDs on the front, but also the back, so they project onto the wall behind them. The software here allows you to either set the lighting up yourself, or let it adjust depending on the game, the music, or the video you're currently enjoying. The screen sampler mode continuously monitors what is happening in the four quadrants of your display and echoes them, almost creating an extension to the display, the idea being to add immersion. 
Now the speaker also has a peak power of 240 watts, not to be underestimated in the sound department. And last but not least, let's take a look at what it's like when you're gaming. So we've pulled up PUBG on the PC over here, and look how the colours of the speaker and what it projects onto the wall as well as in front echo what is happening on display. You could be bleeding while swimming and you'll see the flashes of red and blue. You could be stuck in a rocky outcrop, you'll see the browns of the rock. This will work on games like GTA 5, Fortnite, Dota 2 and so on, and functions thanks to Logitech's LightSync technology. But moving on, you might recognise this logo. So there's a company called Lemon Signs, and they basically turned the Mr. Who's the Boss logo into an actual physical sign, with torched wood on the top, and some untorched wood on the bottom. And I was kind of thinking somewhere along this wall would look good, but I'm still waiting for the mount, so in the meantime, let me know what you think. <sighs> As you know, I really like Nanoleaf products. They already take up a good part of the room, and well, let's just say they're about to dominate it. So we've got over here two more full rhythm starter kits, and after about 20 minutes of just slotting the pieces around to see if I could create a cool looking pattern, I think I found something. But first, let's swap this lens out to something a bit more wide angle. Okay, much better. Now you can see what I'm actually doing, as well as uh, <laughs> the mess we've created. So the current plan is to install 8 panels on this left hand side over here and save 10 for the right hand side because the arrangement we've got on that wall is actually a little bit longer. We're going to echo the straight line that we've got already with the nano leaves, but then add a little bit of a hook so the line almost bends back inwards. And we'll do the same on each side and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will look good because these aren't easy to take off. As you can probably imagine, you've also got to be very careful to get the angles exactly right. If your first panel is even one or two degrees off, by the time you've reached your end panel, it's going to be noticeably diagonal. Okay, so that's installed, and before we take one good look at this upgraded room, we've got one more upgrade. And before that, a little bit of cleaning to do, plus a little bit of cable management on the existing auroras. Now, you might recognise this view. This is the angle from which I normally film, and it looks great, but if we move up, take a look to the left, this is my current microphone stand. It's honestly, it's at complete odds with the rest of the setup. It's very DIY, I've had it for a very long time and I kind of improved it myself. So, this is the blue compass. This is gonna be a pretty high grade replacement to that. Let's see if it works. There is a slight difference between this and my previous arrangement in that my old microphone stand was just standing on its own on the floor. Whereas this one actually clamps to your desk and is able to rotate around. There's also a fair bit of flexibility with this one, nice range of movement, and what seems obvious when you've seen it, but is actually a really clever idea, is little cable ties built into the stand to be able to hide that cable. Compared to what we've come from over here, the blue compass is a pretty elegant solution. Right, that's all the upgrades done, this is the setup. I think this is the fourth or fifth iteration of the room, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. The Nanoleaf Aurora panels could have gone one of two ways, but I think in this case we haven't quite overdone the RGB just yet, but give me another couple of episodes and I'm sure we're on track to do that. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, and if you've got any bright ideas as to where I can place the wooden logo, that'd be really appreciated. With that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.